Hi, I'm Brent Mantooth, and I have done a little bit more work thinking about some of the narrowband filters from some of my last videos, and thought I could use some of these examples to better illustrate and understand what's going on with pre-shift and narrowband filters, and how to think about ultra-narrowband on fast optics. For example, I've seen some filters lately out there that are claiming a 3.5 nanometer bandwidth that can be used on F2 optics. So let's see what that might look like. So most of these calculations were just done in Excel based on some of the previous videos that I've done. So I didn't have all of these filters to test and it takes a lot of work to test these filters. So I'm just going to base this on some of the observations from the previous videos. So I'm gonna approximate filter transmission curves using a Gaussian curve for the equation here. And we're gonna be changing the parameters to give us different characteristics such as that we can adjust the filter center or the bandwidth of the filter here in nanometers. Based on some of my recent findings, I've also adjusted our index of refraction to be this particular value. So I'm just gonna focus on uh, hydrogen alpha emission lines today for these particular concepts. What we can do is have a three nanometer, very narrow bandwidth filter that is exactly centered on our hydrogen alpha emission line. If we were to go back and calculate the transmission as a function of incident angle for this type of filter, we would see that as that incident angle increases, we end up shifting this peak, which causes a decrease in transmittance, such that by the time we're out to about F2.8, which corresponds to an incidence angle of about 10 degrees, we're only transmitting about 40% of our signal through. Now I have this graph down here on the bottom that shows where the photons are coming from for different optical systems. So I've updated this now to actually include a refractor, in this case, a 102 millimeter F7 refractor. And we can see that we're collecting photons all the way from zero degrees up to about five degrees. So in this case, with an ultra narrow bandwidth filter, all of those photons are in a region where they will be 100% transmitted. The next scope up I have here is my edge nine and a quarter SCT with 0.7 reducer shooting at F7. In that case, our central obstruction removes some of the photons or blocks some of the photons that are coming in from very low angles, but we're still collecting photons from about a half a degree up to about five degrees. As we move on to uh, the next optic that's in here, I have a Samyang 135 millimeter camera lens that shoots at F2. Here we can see that we have incident angles that span from zero all the way out through 20 degrees, peaking out around five. So again, putting this in line with our transmission, we're gonna start attenuating signal very quickly from most of the photons that this lens is collecting. And that's gonna have the effect of stopping down this lens so it's not actually operating at F2, but something closer to like F2.5. Two other optical systems that I have in here is my edge nine and a quarter with Hyperstar at f2.2 and an edge 11 with Hyperstar here in the purple. If we were to go now and consider six nanometer bandwidth filters, that's gonna widen our transmission here and that's going to have the effect of increasing. So we're at 10 degrees, we had about 40% transmission. Now with this wider bandwidth, as we do the blue shifting, we'll end up having about 60% transmittance. Likewise, if we were to go all the way up to 12 nanometers at 10 degrees, now we're up to about 80% transmittance. Some of the assumptions that I have in here is that the filter transmittance is a perfect Gaussian. So in this case, just describing the shape. The manufacturers have the ability to design these so that it is not a perfect Gaussian, but may have a flat top, which could improve and expand some of the performance that we're gonna see here. So this is just more like a conceptual demonstration. That leads towards the concept of pre-shift. So in this case, I'm illustrating what it would look like if we had a 12 nanometer bandwidth filter that was exactly centered. We have our transmission line, as we can see here with the, 10, the F2.8 or 10 degree transmission at around 80%. If this filter was shifted, similar to what would happen in the astronomic 12 nanometer filters, you can see here where they've represented the H alpha, both the six and 12 nanometer filters are a little bit are red shifted. If we were to red shift that to its center to the 658 nanometer point, we can see that now our peak is to the right of our hydrogen emission line. 
And what that's done is moved our transmission over to the right. So now at our 10 degree F2.8, we now have more transmission, which is what we were seeing here. Remembering that this is a ideal Gaussian peak compared to the real data that I used here as a characteristic of these filters. Additionally, these particular filters have a little bit of a flattened top compared to the Gaussian peak that I used for these calculations, which is what caused this decrease in transmission here that's actually more of a flat line. When I look back at my astronomic filters, they are specified as being from F infinity down to F 2.1. That has to do with their selection of how it has been pre-shifted and for a certain bandwidth. However, there's some new filters out on the market made by Bader that are described as their ultra high speed, ultra narrow band filters that have bandwidths on the order of like 3.5 nanometers. And they suggest not to use these on scopes that have a focal ratio greater than about F 3.4. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to take a very slightly pre-shifted three nanometer filter that I show here, as long as you were shooting at like F7 or greater, such as with our uh, SCT with reducer or our refractor, you're gonna have full transmission at that particular bandwidth. Uh, the blue shift associated with these angles won't really influence it. But as we go out to these faster optics that have greater angles, you're going to be attenuating the vast majority of the light. So what they can do is shift this significantly. So here I've put in a multi nanometer shift, a little more, I think it was like three and a half nanometer shift that I used here with their 3.5 nanometer bandwidth. And what that does is it moves your peak transmission out to a higher incident angle so that when you're using these fast optics, you're getting a lot more transition in that case because you don't have those low angles of incidence occurring in these particular instruments. That will give you really good rejection, but you'll be focusing all of your collection in a certain area and you're gonna be attenuating some of those photons. These are not based on real transmission data. Again, this was me just using a Gaussian peak and picking some numbers here. So the Bader filters may be better than this, but you're still limited by physics that you're going to have a certain bandwidth and a certain amount of shifting that's going to occur. So with these ultra narrow band filters, yes, you'll be rejecting background, but you're also probably not going to be collecting all of the light that these telescopes, that these optics are providing, especially when you look at something like your Sam Yang lens, because you're going to be attenuating all of these low incident angles that are being provided by optics that don't have a central obstruction. So in summary, narrowband filter blue shift will affect the transmittance for any fast optics, whether it's lenses or reflectors with central obstructions. These fast filters can work for fast optics depending on the bandwidth of the filter and how the manufacturer has pre-shifted that particular filter. These ultra narrow filters can work, but they need to be tuned to the focal ratio, namely the incident angles that are involved. You can have filters that work for all optics from F infinity down to F2. Those will be wider bandwidth filters on the order of six to 12 nanometers that I've already talked about, such as what uh, the Max FR filters by Astronomic provide. Or you can have filters that specifically work on fast optics from F3.6 to F2 with ultra narrow band characteristics, uh, such as the 3.5 nanometer bandwidth filters that I was describing, but recognizing that those won't work on your higher focal ratio uh, optics. You're gonna have to balance transmittance and light pollution rejection and find what's gonna work best for your system. For those of you that feel like hanging around for a little bit of extra math, the way that I was able to do all of these calculations to learn about these systems, I did all of this particular work in Excel, was able to set up just a list of wavelengths and transmission characteristics to where I used this Gaussian equation with some of the parameters that I provided here. To do the shift, I just created a list of incident angles and to calculate the shift, I used the equation that I showed in some of my previous videos, applied this equation as we see here. So we have the equation with what the new central wavelength will be. I uh, adjust that from the center and that gives us our shift uh, in nanometers. And then a trick that I've used, instead of trying to do a complex interpolation, you can just use the XLOOKUP function, which is for which we're going to say, give me the transmission for this cell, so our hydrogen alpha emission, plus 
the wavelength shift. So it's going to look up in this wavelength column for 656 plus whatever the shift is, and then find the transmittance in column B. And this is essentially saying, find the first value that's close to what I'm looking for so that it doesn't have to be an exact match. And from that, I'm able to get that transmission curve, which I then just plot the incident angle versus this transmission to get these particular curves. So if you want to play with that, that's an easy way to set up some of these things in Excel. Leave me any questions or comments below. Thanks.